closer to coming in. <laughs> oh well, I've enjoyed the coolness and I guess I'll probably have to put the umbrella up and get it ready and have it all set up and designed to handle the heat today. You know, there's a tradition in Judaism that in everything, you say a blessing, make a bracha. Um, you acknowledge God in His part of creating everything that you can see, hear, touch, feel, take in your body, sustenance, life itself. And they made it to such a degree that you would spend your entire day constantly in a making a blessing or giving a blessing to God for that which he had already provided. And in some ways, that's a very powerful and positive experience to enjoy. But in some ways, it becomes a vain repetition because after a while, it becomes automatic, systematic, it becomes a religion rather than a relationship. And we have to be careful that we don't make anything by rote as though it were not vibrant and alive and living in us and becoming a part of our being, that we don't emote our emotions with what we're doing so that it is real and it is constant with God. Because God didn't create us to be robotons or to be automatic responders. He has angels that could do that, but he created us with volition and ability to express out of nowhere sudden feelings of joy or sudden emotions of love or sudden responses to rejoice or to be glad or to be thankful and to be sad even and that's what god desires from us is a personal relationship to be real to be alive to be up to be down to be all well-rounded in him so that we would know the love that he has for us because god is love in devotional with Tozer. Many never cross over into God's promised land. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Galatians 5.24 It is very important for earnest Christian believers to understand that long prayer vigils, along with strong crying and tears, are not in themselves meritorious acts. We must be settled in our knowledge that every blessing flows out of the goodness of God as from a fountain. Even those rewards for good works from which some Bible teachers talk so fulsomely and which they always set a sharp contrast to the benefits received by grace alone are at bottom as certainly of grace as is the forgiveness of sin itself. In other words, when a person is telling you that if you tithe, you'll get back, so you might as well tithe because God is mandated to bless you, that is not the blessing that God intended for you. Rather, it is something that God may do anyways, irregardless of whether or not you deserve a blessing, but the things that are greater are when God expresses to you out of His love and His mercy to for you that He would just simply choose to give you something that you've always wanted in spite of your condition currently. And that's mercy, and that's grace, and that's the sign of a loving father that he isn't mandated, like, say, on your birthday to automatically for you to expect a present from him, but rather on any day and at any given moment he would suddenly bless you just because he loves you. The holiest apostle can claim no more than he is an unprofitable servant. The very angels exist out of the pure goodness of God. No creature can earn anything in the usual meaning of the word. All things are by and of the sovereign goodness of God. Yet for all God's good will toward us, he is unable to grant us our heart's desire until all our desires have been reduced to one. When we have dealt with our carnal ambitions, when we have trodden upon the lion and adder of the flesh, have trampled the dragon of self-love under our feet and have truly reckoned ourselves to have died unto sin, and then and only then can God raise us to newness of life and fill us with his blessed Holy Spirit. For everyone that actually crosses over into the promised land, there are many who stand for a while and look longingly across the river and then turn sadly back to the comparative safety of the sandy wastes of the old life. 
We live in the latter days. We live in the last times. There is no time to play games with whether you're in the world, whether you're of the world, or whether you're leaving this world behind. It's your choice now to set aside those things which so easily beset you, the sins that you do commit daily, and to set them aside and to begin to wean yourself from all those addictions that you have, whether it be coffee, or whether it be sex, or whether it be sin, or whether it be selfishness, or whether it be averageness, or whether it be pride, or whether it be ego, whether it be your job, whether it be your wife, whether it be your children, whatever it is, you need to wean yourself now. You don't have much time left. The addictions that you have of your flesh can cause you great consternation when it's time to make a spiritual choice that God may come to you and say, follow thou me now. And you may say, but Lord, I have first to bury my brother. I have first to raise my children. I have first to take care of, and God will say, you cannot be my disciple. You see, if anything comes between you and God, no matter what it may be, whether job, children, wife, life, any situation or circumstance that you place above doing God's will, you have made that an idol. And God will have no other gods before him. You have to, in your mind, reconcile this fact that if God tests you like Abraham, go forward, trust him. Even as Abraham said, I know that even if Isaac died, that God is able to raise him from the dead. You must know that God will take you to that place of crucifixion where you must give up all that you are in order to be all that he is so he can accomplish through you all you need to be to your entire family and community and the people that know you for who God is in you. Don't neglect the calling of God on your life. Don't do it, because the world is passing away, and you have very little time left, very little time left.